Today I will tell you the story of reunification. That is Flores' commitment to the rookie and let find out how these affect Tua Tungavailoa. But first of all, have a look at what Tua hater talk after again rumored that Watson came to Miami. Miami Dolphins cannot get through the playoff was a failure. Please admit that. However, why do people blame a rookie for all the responsibility? They say enough time for Tua, and Tua cannot prove anything at the Dolphins. That they were out of patience with Tua. Please draft another quarterback. There are countless rumors coming. Looks like Tua's end has come. And Tua choose to be silent before all. Not like Watson. It look like you've been working for 10 years. Hard work, under discrimination and contempt. You aim for a single goal. And in the end, everyone negate you. Only your family remains to love and understand what you've done. We call it, Ohana. Then you look to the left, you look to the right. There, there are many people who are laughing at you. They are idiots. It all started December 16, 2020. Tua Tungavailoa entered Saturday night's critical contest against the Las Vegas Raiders with a chance to prove himself as the Miami Dolphins' unquestioned quarterback amid a playoff push. Instead, he lasted just over three quarters, producing just 94 passing yards on 22 throws before coach Brian Flores benched the first-round draft pick for veteran backup Ryan Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick's return to the lineup had an instant impact on Miami's offensive production, with the Dolphins tying the game after several downfield shots from the 38-year-old gunslinger, then taking a lead with just over two minutes to play thanks to a 59-yard touchdown pass to Miles Gaskin, and then sealing the victory with an inexplicable downfield shot with 19 seconds left to set up the deciding field goal. Fitzpatrick was Fitzmagic. When the name Fitzmagic was born, the man in the final cell seconds who had won the playoff round of hopes for the Dolphins from his fight with the Raiders. Loud press, outrageous fans. They claim to reserve tasks. They deny all contributions and contributions of the rookie, who only played his first season at the Hard Rock. Let me tell you something you probably didn't know, in studying Tungavailoa, he is an efficient quick rhythm passer with a conservative approach from the pocket. He has posted the second-best touchdown-to-interception ratio, 10-2, to 2, by a rookie in league history, per NFL research. And he has the lowest interception percentage, 0.9%, of any quarterback in NFL history with 200-plus pass attempts. Most importantly, Tungavailoa is one of four quarterbacks since 1950 with a 0.750-plus win percentage and an interception rate below 2.0 in the same season. Considering that puts him in the company of Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, who've accounted for five NFL MVP awards, 18 Pro Bowl selections and seven Super Bowl titles. So, that's ridiculous. Tua's critics are slaves of victory. They're only fans when you win, but are willing to go against you when you lose. But, let's forget about the names in 2021 draft for now. The main issue here, that I want to tell you is, losing a match doesn't mean you are bad. Tua Tungavailoa, early in Miami Dolphins, worked with Chan Gailey. Let's take some questions. What's the difference between Tua in Alabama and Tua in Dolphins? No, Tua hasn't changed, Tua's gameplay remains the same, he's brilliant. So let me point out one thing, which I think is correct. To help Tua shine in the 2021 season. There is a classy offensive coordinator such as Ken Dorsey. What I told you yesterday. It is difficult to say what level Ken Dorsey is a factor in the offensive success experienced by the Buffalo Bills in 2020. And because of that, it becomes even more challenging to decipher whether or not Dorsey would be the right hire for the Miami Dolphins to fill their vacancy at offensive coordinator. But just because there are come uncertainties tied to the qualifications of who has not even been formally attached to the Dolphins' job, there are still some merits to consider for the Dolphins beyond the scheme and X's and O's that Dorsey will bring to the table with a potential interview. Put the nuts and bolts of football strategy away, here are three reasons that make hiring Ken Dorsey an attractive proposition for the Miami Dolphins. Potential longevity. This is offensive coordinator number three in three seasons for Brian Flores' staff. That isn't necessarily cause for concern when you look at the situation in context, however. Chad O'Shea was brought over from New England with the Dolphins having to wait until after the Super Bowl to make the transition to Flores in the first place. 
and Chan Gailey was brought in to run an offense with Ryan Fitzpatrick in mind just as much as anyone else. The Dolphins are going a different direction and therefore a different approach is required. Dorsey, with success, would inevitably become a head coaching candidate. But that would be two or three, year, three years down the line, given that he only has two years of experience as a quarterback coach in Buffalo. Three years of the same offensive coordinator? That's an eternity based on the current standard. Quarterback development. Josh Allen's leap from year one under Dorsey to year two is one of the most impressive leaps in play we've seen from any young quarterback in recent memory. Miami has a young quarterback of their own that they're hoping to develop, so hiring someone who knows that process is an obvious win for the Dolphins. Dorsey isn't the only variable that boosted Allen's play, but he nevertheless had a hand in that evolution. It reduces the power of the Bills. Fire kill fire. Offensive coordinator Brian Dabble will be back in 2021 for the Bills after getting interest in the head coach's hiring cycle. If there's going to be an interruption in the AFC East champion's chain of command, pulling Dorsey out of line may be the only remaining opportunity to create some chaos in the Bills' building. Of course, you don't make your hire based on that information. But it is a nice icing on the cake to help sell his resume provided a few thing are reality, the Dolphins are interested. Dorsey is interested. Dorsey's X's and O's impress the Dolphins enough to build a firm case for the position. So should we sign Dorsey? Please comment below. However, I think this is just the beginning of Brian Flores's team rebuild. As you all know, Brian Flores added some weapon for Tua. By hiring a quarterback coach. Charlie Fry was offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach at Central Michigan the past two years, but previously was Tungavailoa's coach at the Elite 11 camp for the country's top high school players NFL media analyst Bucky Brooks noted the significance of the relationship between the former Alabama QB and Fry. He has great chemistry with him and understands how to craft plays around his skills, Brooks tweeted. Don't underestimate the value of that previous relationship and connection. Fry is one of the best teachers and communicators that I've been around. He is outstanding with young QBs and he simplifies the game in a way that makes it easy for them. A plus hire with Tua's long-term development in mind. He's not only an old coach of Tua, but he was also Ken Dorsey's teammate at the Cleveland Browns. Browns. Close reunion revolves around our quarterback, does that make your imagination soar? Though, one offensive coordinator won't make you to be a champion. Dolphins need more weapons to make 2021 season high. And 2021 NFL Draft is an opportunity. The main targets of the Dolphins are probably already captured by you. I've read a lot of your comments, and most of you have the same thoughts with me. But, definitely not. And never mention, the Duck of Texans, to me. Back to the story. I still have a question that, why Tua Tungavailoa remains silent. Before the rumors, before the provocations. And despite being given new weapons, he remained silent. Was it a manifestation of professionalism, or was there any other reason behind it? Join me in finding out more tomorrow. Have a nice weekend. Today is a beautiful day, I'm going to eat Florida-style roast duck.